Now let's talk about the neutrophils, which are the most abundant cell of the innate immune system or of the immune system in general. And they're actually <clears throat> a more potent killer of pathogens than macrophages are. And the reason is because they have a wider range of innate immune receptors. They have this huge arsenal of antimicrobials. They're highly phagocytic. And I like to think of it as the fact that they go all out. They go and they die <laughs> in the process of, of doing this. They're, they're insane, like Spartans. Um, they have a very short life, only about three days, and they are very, very high in number. And this is just showing you the neutrophils express receptors for many bacterial and fungal constituents. So here we see the LPS receptor CD14, complement receptor 4, a glycan receptor, <clears throat> the mannose receptor, which we kind of talked about earlier, CR3 scavenger receptors, informal methionine receptor, which is a way of detecting bacteria. This picture doesn't even do it justice, though, um, because it, it, it can do so much more. Um, so the neutrophils are going to bind to bacteria, they're going to phagocytize them, and they're going to kill them by using a lot of the toxic contents of their granules, which is what we're mostly going to talk about. Um, so this is a diagram here that's saying the neutrophils are themselves programmed to die. They're like... I like to think of them as like kamikaze pilots, or you could even think of them as Spartans if you want to talk about like they're so hardcore, like they don't retreat. <laughs> anyway, so the bacterium is going to be phagocytized by the neutrophil. And then the phagosome is going to fuse with the azorophilic and specific granules, which we'll talk about what that means later, but specific granules is the thing that I want to talk about here. And then the pH of the phagosome is going to rise. It's going to become alkalotic. Antimicrobial response is going to be activated and the bacterium is going to be killed. The pH of the phagosome is going to decrease with the fusion of a lysosome, which contains hydrolytic enzymes, which are as themselves acidic. Uh, <clears throat> they're going to degrade the bacterium completely. And then the neutrophil is going to die by apoptosis and is going to be phagocytized by the macrophages. So that the methodologies that neutrophils are using are so extreme that the neutrophils can't live long enough to replenish their granules. Like, they, they, they can't. So um, very short-lived. So again, the primary granules here are characterized by the presence of myelexial peroxidases um, and is densely packed material that disrupts and digests microbes. So I like to think of it as the primary one is a lot of the enz enzymatic type of uh, antimicrobial proteins. The secondor secondary granules are going to have a lot of lactoferrin, which we've talked about that when we talked about the barrier videos, but this just blocks iron metabolism, ferrin, like the Latin word ferrum, or the periodic table, F-E, iron, yeah. So this is going to block uh, pathogens access to metal ions. I don't know if you've ever had like a really bad stomach ache, but if you do, one of the things that you can do is go on a clear liquid diet for like three days. It, it sucks not eating things for three days, but you, you'll throw it up anyways. And the way that this works is <clears throat> just the way that lactoferrin works. It starves the pathogen of iron supply, and so it can't, it can't use that. It needs iron just as much as we need iron. Um, it also contains components of NADPH oxidase, which we'll talk about that in much more detail. Just know that we're using oxidation to kill pathogens, which is, again, why inflammatory diseases are almost directly correlated with cancer, because... Oxidation is bad, yeah, <laughs> which is a symbol in the phagosome and effectively will increase the pH. This is so beautiful. Think about this. You're, you're, imagine washing your hands with a base, then washing your hands with peroxide, then washing your hands with an acid. And, and not, that's not even the, the full details of all the things that we're going in here. So, so neutrophils are really good at killing stuff. We also have tertiary granules, which this little thing here is blocking my... Actually, maybe if I just move it out of the way here and start drawing. No, no, that doesn't get rid of it. Um, tertiary granules, which are characterized by the presence of gelatinase. And gelatinase works um, kind of in the similar way um, that lactoferrin works, in that we're blocking the iron access that these pathogens are going to have. Okay, so killing of a bacterial... Uh, killing of a bacterial... I think I should say killing of a bacteria is dependent on a respiratory burst. But it's not just bacteria, it's, it's, it's fungi or protozoa or whatever it is that is phagocytized by the neutrophil. So in the absence of infection, we have an incredibly low pH that keeps the maternal granules inactive. That's why they're called neutrophils, because they're not super acidic. But when the granules are going to fuse with a newly formed phagosome, this is when we have oxidative bursts. Um, which is going to also increase the pH, again, washing it with the base. 
And it's going to activate a lot of, oh, this picture doesn't include it. Those fools. I'm going to go ahead and draw it. That's the lone electron that we have on the oxygen that makes it a free radical that makes it really good at oxidizing things and destroys the protein's three-dimensional structure. Um, but we have to have ways of, of yeah, limiting collateral damage. So the way that we do this is superoxide dismutase, which, again, takes this superoxide form and converts it into hydrogen peroxide, which is also unstable, which hydrogen peroxide is going to be converted by catalase to H2O2 and O2, which is why hydrogen peroxide, despite forming free radicals, is not considered a carcinogen by most standards, at least not in like commercial concentrations. Obviously, if I were to take it in high enough industrial grade concentrations, it could like melt the entire like plastic out of the bottle. Um, but if you also know that certain bacteria, like staph, for example, has catalase, so uh, think about that next time you're putting uh, peroxide on a cut and it starts to bubble up. The bubbles, yeah. Anyway, so the phagolysosome forms and then it becomes acidic because the lysosome has hydrolytic enzymes inside of it that need acidic contents. And this is one of the most effective mechanisms that I can think of for killing pathogens. The other thing that neutrophils have, and this is so cool, they have these things called nets, which are neutrophil extracellular traps. And so there's two ways that neutrophils can die. One of them is going to be through apoptosis, um, and then those are going to be eaten up by the macrophages. The other way that they can be killed is by neotosis, or netosis, sorry. And this is where the cell literally like explodes like a frag grenade, <laughs> releasing all this stuff out into the, to the areas around it. Um, defensins, proteases, calprotectin, for example, is something that, uh, just to show you where I'm at here, calprotectin, this is something that kills uh, fungal uh, infections or clears up fungal infections really well. And when the infection is going to finally cleared, it's the macrophages, the resident macrophages, that are going to halt the neutrophil recruitment, which we talked about that when we talked about neutrophil homing and all the different cytokines that are involved in that process there. Okay, so, the, so neutrophils are short in life, but very, very high in number. In terms of R and K selection theory, theory they're way over on the R side. Um, also, some notes about them is that they have a very, they have the widest range of pattern recognition receptors in three discrete ways. But the first thing I want to mention is, okay, so there's primary granules, secondary granules, and tertiary granules. So the primary granules have a lot of stuff inside of them. But for the purposes of this, I'm just going to go ahead and include that in a very broad category of saying antimicrobial enzymes. Um, just to give you some examples, I'm not going to write these out, but they have lysozyme, they have defensins, which is not an enzyme, but it's still uh, antimicrobial proteins. They have neutral type of proteases, um, myeloperoxidase, um, and, and, okay, I'll just go ahead and list those. All right, so defensins, myeloperoxidase, neutral proteases, and then lysozymes. You should know what each and every one of these do, at least by this point. So for the secondary granules, well, those contain two things. Um, one of the things that you're familiar with is lactoferrin. You remember the lactoferrin just blocks iron metabolism or blocks uh, pathogens access to iron. Um, but that's that's a common thing. What makes the secondary granules really unique to me is that so NADPH oxidase. What that diagram, that last diagram had shown, but basically we have Na. DPH inside of our cells, inside of the neutrophils. And this is going to combine with a lot of influx of oxygen going in. And so this is going to convert that NADPH and O2 to um, really, for the purposes of this, just two molecules of this. This right here, this oxygen with this free radical is known as superoxide. And it is the extremely powerful oxidizing agent because of that free radical. It's going to steal electrons out and disrupt proteins, uh, three-dimensional structures. It's going to denature them really, really well. Um, we already talked about lactoferrin, so hopefully you, you remember that, but just to reiterate, blocks uh, <clears throat> iron metabolism. Tertiary, uh, only one that I think that's important is gelatinase, and both gelatinase and lactoferrin kind of do the same job in that they block the production or block pathogens' access to iron, which is something that pathogens need. 
Okay, so that's the granules. Now, the next thing that I wanted to mention was the actual process of the respiratory burst. So the first thing that happens in the respiratory burst is we have this influx of oxygen, and this is going to have an extremely, oh well, we first we have the low pH, <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. This is pretty acidic conditions here, and then we have, through the action of NADP oxidase, this influx of, of oxygen. So I'm just go ahead and draw this out here. We have low pH, then we have the granules. The granules are going to undergo oxidative burst. I should say oxidative. I don't know why there's an S there. Oxidative burst. And in the process of oxidative burst, this has a influx of oxygen, which is going to take an increase in the pH. The release of the superoxide radical, but also at the same time, kind of I guess for uh, damage control, because remember that neutrophils are going to die; they're they're going to explode <laughs> or be eaten by macrophages, and so we don't want to have too much of this oxide free radical floating around. So we have to have means of controlling that, and the way that we do this is by an enzyme called superoxide dismutase. Kind of running out of room here, but what this does is this takes the oxygen radical and then is going to convert it into a less active form known as hydrogen of hydrogen peroxide which you know what that is if you've ever had a cut on your leg and then catalyst don't know if I'm spelling that right will take the hydrogen peroxide in and it will spit out H2O and O2 so um, that, that's how we can control the damage of the oxidative burst in the granules um, we also have, um, I'm just going to draw it over here, the lysosomes, which if you take in general biology, you know what the lysosomes have hydrolytic enzymes, and these are both going to kind of fuse um, with the phagosome, switch color, which gives us a phagolysosome. Okay, so just to reiterate the points here, so first we have the granules coming in, and then second, we have the lysosomes coming in. Once we have ourselves a phagolysosome, which kind of got cut off here, this is an incredibly low acidic pH. Okay, so the last thing, and I really hope I have room to talk about it, but I may not, is known as the nets. So just like we talked about earlier in the last slide, there's two ways that neutrophils can die, apoptosis and then neotosis. And with neotosis, we get these things called nets. And so what happens in the net is the, I'm being very scientific with this, the nucleus explodes like a frag grenade. And as it explodes, it's going to release more defensins into the localized area, other types of proteases, and I hope I can fit this in here, um, calprotectin. But I'm just gonna say it three times. Nucleus explodes, releases defensins, protease, calprotectin. Calprotectin defends us against fungal infections. Calprotectin, just keep that in mind there.